Well, here's what we're learning. Uh, the vote on this matter in this uh, Senate committee was 10 to 7. I know that Senator John McCain ended up being a yes on this vote, and it's my understanding that Marco Rubio, the Republican of Florida who had expressed some concerns, was a no on this vote. Overall, the vote 10 to 7, so it goes on to the United States Senate for further action. The Senate is expected to vote on it sometime next week. Still working in a House committee now. The House has to vote on it. They have to come together. In other words, we're a long way away. It's my understanding that our guest is available. Is that correct? Interesting. The Florida, uh, the Republican Florida Congresswoman Eliana Ross Layton is, is with us, uh, Ross Layton, and she chairs the House Foreign Affairs Subcommittee on the Middle East and has just stepped out of the hearing on the House side to update us on matters. Congresswoman, it's good to see you again. Thanks so much. Hey, thanks so much, Shep. You it's, know, I don't think that we're going to be having a, uh, a vote in the committee as they just had in the Senate. At least it wasn't uh, detailed today in, in the hearing. Uh, we had uh, the same witnesses that they had in the Senate uh, yesterday testified before us today, are still testifying. But it's not clear that we will have a, a, de a debate and a vote in the committee. It may just go straight to the, to the House floor. Mm. I, you, you expressed some concerns yesterday. Have any of those... Can you tell our viewers what they were and are and whether any of them have been alleviated for you? I think that they have been alleviated uh, somewhat. Uh, I wanted to make sure that uh, the, the little problem that, uh, that Secretary uh, Kerry created about the boots on the ground, oh, perhaps if Syria implodes. You know, that's the one thing that Americans don't want, it, boots on the ground, uh, another military direct involvement by the U.S. forces, the best uh, fighting men and women on the planet. They are certainly not, uh, not for that. They may not really be very much for this uh, limited uh, st targeted strikes, but for sure no boots on the ground. And, and today I think that he was more specific about that uh, in the House committee uh, debate. Uh, I, he was uh, more forceful. He does we, absolutely no boots on the ground. Also, I had the opportunity to ask him about who's going to pay for all this. You know, all of these uh, attaboy papers and, uh, and letters of congrats that we're getting from around the world, according to them, uh, all these countries that are with us, who's going to, are they going to be paying for it? Are they going to be participating? He says the Arab League could, in essence, pay for the whole operation. When the Arab League, the Arab League has, it. the Arab League has emphatically said no. I mean, couldn't I Saudi, know. the ones who are really affected by all this, the Saudis and the Jordanians and the Turkey, where are they? Well, he said, you know, Secretary Kerry was, was uh, specific in saying, uh, that the Arab League has the money and that the, and that they have the disposition to pay for it. The Arab uh, League said emphatically, not only are they not going along with it, they have come out formally with a paper saying they are against it. The British are against it. There is the, not the a nation on the planet, Congresswoman, with great respect and admiration, not a nation on the planet that has said, if you go do this, we're right there with you. The American people are against it in enormous numbers, and the word from Capitol Hill is, no boots on the ground. Oh, really? What about this? From the south of Lebanon, Hezbollah decides, no, you don't, and they launch something into Kiryat Shmona in Israel, and then the Israelis retaliate. Is it still no? Or if we just stirred a hornet's nest that's going to leave us in a full-scale Middle East war, and if not, how can we be sure? Well, th th those are excellent questions. None of that was answered in, in our committee deliberations, nor were they answered in, on the Senate. He said uh, uh, perhaps there's some talk about coming back, uh, another resolution were, were this uh, uh, parade of horribles uh, to happen. But one thing that I believe uh, we should do, and I know that this is not a popular decision, but I believe that it's important to uh, uh, make sure that Iran understands that when the United States says this is a red line that will not be crossed when it comes to the use of chemical weapons, that we are going to act. And so then we, when we tell Iran all options are on the table, that we really do mean it. If we would, would not act in Syria, if they, since they've used uh, chemical weapons, we would, uh, we would be uh, in a real dire situation in terms of national security. So what we need to know is what are the objectives in this limited targeted strike. It's to and send a message, the message, right? And to degrade? 
and uh, and to degrade and to and I asked Secretary uh, Kerry what does degradation look like what exactly are we are we talking about I think that they still have to provide the United States Congress and the American people with these answers and they have to do it uh, before the vote the vote will right. be uh, next week sooner rather than later Congressman we're we talking want to answers. sources over there already who tell us that so many of the munitions have already been moved to to hospitals and schools that so many of the people who would have done the fighting have been moved to similar places and that whatever we strike what if they have put women and children in those places and and could you put it past someone who would gas his own people to do such a thing of course that's what the, that's what we unfortunately expect a, a, a murderous thug like uh, al Assad to do he would use uh, the, the weakest and the most vulnerable as human shields and then he would get all the video cameras there and to say look at what these horrible Americans have done I did not do this the Americans have killed these innocents uh, but uh, I don't think that he has any credibility on the world stage well, but he uh, certainly does it but I remember so distinctly congresswoman and I remember talking about you to you in this very forum about this very matter when we were told that our actions would be limited and direct that they would take weeks and not months and that we would be greeted as liberators I'm not equating the two things but I am saying that our nation is weary and when we hear that no Absolutely. one in the world is going with, in lockstep with us they can talk about friends all over the world all they want but there's no one committing any sort of munitions or anything else to this the Arab League is against it our own people are against it the people of the nations involved have said they're against it and within the region the people when surveyed say if the Americans do anything over here no matter for what reason it's the Americans fault a lot of people are asking themselves why in the world would we bother when we haven't even suggested that what we're doing might stop the slaughter. A hundred thousand well, plus people are dead over there. And in fact, that, that is not the mission, and, and they've been careful to say that. The mission is not to stop the slaughter. What we're in fact saying is uh, you can continue killing your own people. You just can't kill oh. them with chemical oh gas. That is in essence uh, what we're saying with this vote. The breaking news out of Washington, the Senate committee has approved by a vote of 7 to 10 to authorize the use of limited and targeted force against the Syrian regime uh, in, in an effort to, among other things, degrade his ability to strike against his own people with uh, chemical weapons. They don't even think they can stop it. They're trying to degrade it. And they're not saying that they want to stop the slaughter of innocent civilians because they know they can't do that. As you just heard from Ileana Ross Layton and the congresswoman from South Florida just a moment ago. So why did John McCain change his vote? Earlier today, he said that he would be a no vote. He just voted in the affirmative. And John McCain added an amendment to this, to this uh, resolution, I guess. Uh, and, and that amendment said, in essence, without all the, the exact wording, that the effort would be to change the momentum on the battlefield. Jennifer Griffin is live with us in Washington. Jennifer, when you put all the pieces of this puzzle together, they don't fit, and I don't understand why. Shepard, you just honed in on the very key language that was added at the last minute to this Senate resolution. It was McCain's amendment, and it talks about how the goal of this military mission would be to shift the momentum away from the Assad regime on the battlefield. That is a very different mission than what the president and the secretary uh, uh, of defense and secretary of state have outlined and General Dempsey have outlined as this limited, tailored mission that we've been hearing about. Shifting the momentum toward, um, away from the Assad regime suggests moving one step closer to regime change. That is something that the administration has said that this mission is not about. So they can't have it both ways. Uh, but McCain inserted that language because he has been very concerned. He wanted to see the opposition upgraded. That means giving weapons to the opposition. But as we have heard, that opposition is a very messy group of factions, uh, many of which have been infiltrated by, by Al Qaeda. So this is a very uh, different mission that the Senate has just passed uh, by a vote of 10 to 7. And McCain's vote in the end was because of that amendment. Jennifer, they have been trying, though it is impossible to do so because the facts belie it, they have been trying to suggest to us that we're not taking sides here. This amendment changes that equation. In essence, as I read this amendment and what was just passed, what we have just said is it's as if Ole Miss is playing LSU. <laughs> and we've just chosen Ole Miss. 
And and you, you know what I'm saying? We've just t we've just taken sides against the Assad. We have just entered into and taken a side in a civil war in the Middle East if we do what they've just what they've just suggested. Well, this the second that you start dropping tomahawks on Damascus, and you start changing the equation there. And nobody can tell you where that will end up. That's the principle of unintended consequences with any military operation. The battle plans go out the window as soon as those first tomahawks are fired. Uh, th th this resolution, this from everything that I've read from the House side, this would not have a chance on the House side, would it? Well, it's not clear at this point. They're still debating. They're still talking right now. In fact, uh, Secretary Kerry, Secretary Hagel, and General Dempsey are before the House Foreign Affairs Committee. Um, and so it is not clear. The questions, I will tell you, were much tougher on the House side today yeah. than they were before the Senate Foreign Affairs Committee yesterday. Jennifer, uh, a couple of things that I think are important for everybody to think through. First of all, John Kerry has said if we don't do this, he'll strike again. Well, there's no way to know that. But what I'm curious about is, is there any intelligence to suggest that if we do do this, if we do go in and make these surgical strikes, as they've been described to us, that Assad won't either A, gas his people again, B, suggest to Hezbollah that they gas Israel and begin a full-blown thing, or C, that, that, that President Assad won't uh, escalate this in other ways? I think the thing, Shepard, that there's been no answer given to is that since they, uh, since they have given Assad so much warning, you have these artillery scuds on the move. They have been hidden in civilian areas. There's no indication the Pentagon would go after them in, in civilian areas. So Assad will basically be able to use chemical weapons a day after he, uh, these tomahawk strikes occur, and there's nothing stopping him from sharing them with Hezbollah. And, and if he shares them with Hezbollah, then Hezbollah could use them across the border into Israel. They certainly could.